For people who don't know me, I'm I mean one. I work with uh, Neil. Um, this is my sixth year here, actually. Um, I was sketch started. So I'm sure everyone knows what uh, Alasso Liberbacter is. Um, it's been with us for past six years, but so far, nobody has uh, ever been uh, cultured yet. So much work has been done on the um, based on sequences, and with the two genome sequences, the diagnostic uh, um, method has been improved a lot. I need to mention uh, uh, the talk uh, Chris and um, Rebecca gave this morning, basically the foundation of this uh, piece of uh, project. Um, also, Rebecca mentioned there are five haplotypes that uh, have been de described. So those are A and B associated with the uh, zebra chip. And so far, those uh, um, host has been uh, reported uh, to, um, the diseases are reported to be associated with uh, those two haplotypes. And in our Central and North America, we have uh, both haplotypes. Um, in New Zealand, they only have the hyper A. Um, just quickly uh, uh, go through the, the other three types. They're all um, in our European countries right now. Hopefully, we won't, we won't get them. Maybe they're here. Um, the haplotype C was the first uh, reported by Dr. An. I, sorry, I don't remember your last name. That was uh, in Finland. Um, so it's associated with uh, carrot disease, and um, it's uh, transmitted by the carrot, uh, I believe, this uh, trazocilid, or correct me if I was wrong. Um, so later on, the Sweden and the Norway and the France, they also found the haplotype C associated with the carrot uh, disease. Um, in Spain, those two haplotypes has, have been reported to, to be associated with uh, both the uh, carrot and the uh, celery disease. Um, the um, psyllid is this, uh, I don't want to pronounce it, I <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> so um, since we're working on ZC, we just focus on those two haplotypes. So from now on, everything is... Uh, a and B. Um, so this map just gives you a quick review of how the distribution in the US. As we can see, most of the states have both haplotypes. Um, the, this map, I uh, used the uh, or original uh, publication by um, Nelson at all. Um, so the red letters. Uh, I um, update uh, based on based on our um, testing. So in the Pacific Northwest, all the field tubers um, turn out to be HEPA only. Um, I need to uh, clarify this B. That one actually from Joe's uh, colony, which originally is from Texas. So I. We, so far, we don't have any field uh, sample um, tested to, to be um, uh, hep B. So, what's the big fuss? Everyone asks. So, what's what's the biological relevance? Um, early on, um, Neil, that's in the field in a Texas commercial field. Um, so, on the left side. That's the hepatitis A type uh, symptom. On the right side, that's uh, infected by hepatitis B. So the foliage symptom much uh, more um, milder, and the plants uh, do not die. And the tubers uh, from those plants, uh, the necrosis are only limited to the uh, vascular tissue. Um, on the other hand, um, the uh, plants infected by hepatitis B, the symptom much uh, more severe, 
and the plants eventually die. And the tuber from those plants does the typical ZC. And uh, those typing uh, were done um, later on, so we have a lot of archive sample. And also <laughs> our greenhouse trial um, that we did that last year, so we used the eggplant and tomato and the potato. So just let you know the three plants in each picture. On the left side, that's the uh, control. And in the middle, that's uh, infected by hep A. Um, um, the, right, the right one is the infected by hepatitis B. Um, so six weeks after um, infection, um, as we can see, the, uh, the healthy one, pretty healthy, and then the both uh, infected ones uh, stunted, and the B um, seems more severe, like uh, yellower and more stunted. And on the tomato, similar um, phenomenon observed. Um, the symptoms are like a more purplish uh, rather than, uh, this morning Julian reported that their greenhouse uh, study, the, the, the symptoms like a yellowish, I'm not sure it's because of different variety used. Um, so the, on the potato, the six weeks after inoculation, again, see the healthy one, pretty healthy, and the both infected uh, showing the foliage symptom, and the bee seems more severe. And it's uh, eight weeks, uh, so the bee infected one died. Um, also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Julian this morning, his research, uh, green, both greenhouse uh, on the uh, tomato and the field work, kind of support this, uh, like the B hepatitis seems more aggressive. And so the exi existing typing message, uh, that's like uh, the past few years uh, I reported here, um, just quickly review if you do not uh, remember, especially for people who do not do those, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, the other thing I would like to uh, tell about about the two haplotypes. When I first joined the um, new lab, um, I did like a 40, uh, eight, total 80 um, strains uh, doing the sequencing based on the 16S, 23S, uh, the interspecialty. Um, so it turned out they distinguished two uh, groups. So after that, we are collaborated with Dr. Hong Lin. Um, he had that uh, the haplotype B uh, uh, genome sequencing. So um, Hong developed uh, the SSR primers and also the multilocal sequencing typing primers uh, because the sample used uh, the same. So we knew they're definitely the two um, distinguished uh, groups. So that's why we went ahead for the hyper A uh, genome sequence. Um, so from the uh, SSR primers, because uh, normally the amplicon uh, uh, difference is so small, you cannot uh, uh, tell the two types part on other gel. Um, um, surprisingly, there was one um, set of primer. Um, the difference uh, um, about 80 base pair um, different. So you can tell them part uh, on the other gel. So using that, uh, I de we developed the SR SSR um, conventional PCR. Um, um, it's been published on the um, uh, American Journal of Potato Research. Um, I believe the Cecilius lab uh, using this method. Um, so the problem is that sometimes the mixed samples not always got two bands. And the other thing, you cannot quantify the two haplotypes. We try to use the cyber green um, with the matching curve. If they're um, single infected, you can tell them part. But for the mixed, uh, you wouldn't know. Always one are dominant. Uh, so um, last year, um, we have the genome, uh, we developed the haplotype uh, specific primers 
based on the two uh, genome sequences. Um, we developed the cyber green, um, uh, uh, but like without the internal control, you cannot truly quantify. And also like when you have samples, you need to not, we normally do, you first detect if it's LSO positive, you use the multiplex qPCR. And if they were positive, then we haplotype use the um, haplotype specific primers in separate reactions. So it turned out if you have a, like a one positive sample, you do three runs. Um, if you have a lot of sample, like a, um, Rachel reported this morning, we run, I don't know so far, 20,000. And then you, when you do a replicate, it's a triplicate. So even though cyber green is cheaper, but if you have a lot of samples, you ended up like a, the cost is much higher. So the beauty of the multiplex, um, first is conserve the precious sample. For example, when we do the, um, um, the silly survey, you only have a little amount then before you do any more research, you run out of the DNA. And of course, the per uh, volume, you got more data. And then with the internal control, you reduce the number of false negative or positive. And the other thing, um, it's more accurate uh, for um, the haplotype comparison with each sample because you're, you're using the same uh, starting template. And uh, overall, you will save uh, money and the labor um, for a better result. So the objectives were to develop a multiplex um, Tatman real-time PCR assay for uh, haplotype quantification in plant as well as the, in the cellulite. Um, so this part, uh, as I said, uh, Chris already, uh, that what he uh, talked uh, basically is the background, uh, the, the message material part. Um, so from those, uh, the primers we screened, we choose the most uh, uh, consistent uh, and sensitive primers, one set each. Um, when, then we develop the uh, respective probe. Um, for the internal control, um, for the potato, um, we use the um, COX2 and the CELED CO1. Uh, I just to, I just want, I need to clarify, those are not the published uh, primer, not the ones uh, for the haplotyping. Those are the ones that are, um, we developed last year, I reported here, since they're, they're already uh, validated. Uh, so we just use those and de design the respective probe. Um, all the, te all the um, assays we use the BioRed, so advanced the universal probe supermix. So um, first uh, we optimize the assays and then validate the use field to collect samples. Um, uh, from the plant, we, the samples collected between 2008 and 2014, and the silage collected between 2011 and 13, and the data uh, normalized and the transformed. Um, let's look at the result. And first, uh, let's see the multiplexer for the uh, plant. So basically, it's a triplex. So we have the half A and the B and the internal control primer and probes. And the specificity, Chris already, we already tested that they're specific. Um, the A amplify A, B amplify B. And also the CT, um, uh, no CT on the negative controls such as water and healthy plant. And then we look at the sensitivity and the efficiency um, using the standard curve. So the templates is uh, the tenfold zero dilution of the uh, respective uh, plasmid. And the x axis, that's the log copy number. 
and the y-axis, so that's the CP value. Um, because the R square for both the regression, they both pretty good. And then the efficiency for HEP A is 102% and the HEP B 98%. So basically detection limit is 10 log, that means 10 uh, one log, that means 10 copies. Um, so with that, we're pretty confident that the uh, assay is pretty um, robust. So we test the samples. Um, I arrange them based on year. So in 2008, um, um, yeah, I forgot to mention the samples when I select, I purposely sele select the ones where the uh, type to use the SSR and also last year's. So just to kind of like a double check, otherwise, how do you know? You, you cannot verify yourself. And the, here, the only thing is uh, if yes or not, or not just yes or not, we have the, um, uh, the, the title. So we have three Dalhart samples and two B and A and this one from uh, Kansas, there's HEP A and uh, the California samples, uh, HEP A. And then the 2011 sample, most of them from the, uh, the ring test, the uh, seven labs partic participants. Um, you probably remember that. Um, here, those samples, uh, Washington, I uh, made a note, those are the Texas tuber. Um, so let's go through this quickly. Those are basically um, the Dalhart sample, we have A and um, mix, mixed, and then um, we have uh, several Bs. And the, those two uh, ad hoc sample, that's when they first find out uh, the in the storage, the tubers. So they send us and um, we test them and then um, we test them at that time use the SSR. So surprisingly, they all, yeah. they, um, all of them, everything is like a half A. Um, so I'm not going through, just give you an idea how the testing went through. And then that's 2012. And uh, that's uh, 2014. I only have two minutes, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so we're done with the plant uh, sample testing. Um, that's the fillet uh, multiplex. Uh, again, the HEP A, B, and the internal control. So it's a triplex, uh, and the sensitivity, uh, same thing. They're specific. No, the specificity, uh, they're specific. They don't uh, amplify our negative controls. And then sensitivity, um, same concept. So we do the standard curve. So we have the A is the solid line, B is the dotted line, and then the R square both like one, and then the efficiency as listed here. Um, for the sample test, uh, 2011, we have for the from different locations and um, the types are much higher as we can see from um, compared to the plant uh, samples. And then that's the 2012 samples. Those are from the silage service. Um, so it seems most of them like have B and occasionally there um, only one has A and then they're mixed samples and then 2013, same idea, I don't want to go through, I don't have time. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, here is uh, uh, the Guatemala two samples are HEP A. Um, with that, I uh, conclude my uh, talk. So the multiplex are QPCR assays, they're specific, sensitive, and efficient and they can quantify the two haplotypes uh, 
can plant or sell it simultaneously. So when you do uh, pass the one reaction, you're done. Um, we do need to thank our funding agents and also our suppliers. Without those samples, we cannot do anything. Um, with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>